two projects that I've made using the LLV and the Clang, especially the Clang library. It's a code browser and it's a replacement for, uh, for Mock, for Qt's Mock. Um, so before we start, just a, a bit about myself. As a student, I was working on KDE. Uh, that's how I get introduced to open source and that's how uh, that's what leads me later to be hired by Trolltech and to work a bit on Qt. I quit that in 2011 to start a company called Wobok. We're doing consultancy, so if any of you is interested by a contractor to do some code in LLVM or related to Clang or anything, just I'm plugging my <laughs> advertisement here. Um, even if I left Qt, even if, if I left Nokia, I still have a bit uh, in the community, I still have a fit in the community, I still review patches, and I'm also still maintaining uh, the mock, which, I'm which is also why I made a replacement. Uh, so two projects in this presentation. The first one is an online code browser. I'll start with that. Um, as a developer, C++ developer, I spend a lot of time writing code, but even more so reading the code. You spend a lot of time reading code, code that is not necessarily written by you or has been written long ago, and you need to understand how code works with each other. You need to go from one file to the other. And in order to do that, what we have is nice IDEs. So if you want to read the code from a library or for another project, what you end up to do is to download the code, open it with the IDE, hope there is not too much to configure, usually OK. And then uh, you can browse uh, with all the control. Um, my favorite IDE is kdevelop, and uh, I was like you can surf on project on GitHub, but it's, it would be much better if you could be on the web just like you're in your IDE. And that's what the project is. Um, so I have this, this project, uh, code.wobok.org, which is basically a re-implementation of an IDE. And I've uh, uploaded here some projects. So for example, LLVM. Uh, just Um, so yeah, for, for example, we want to read the code of a function. We just need to increase a bit the font. And so this is the kdevelop uh, way of uh, representing things. It's a, a, a very col colorful thing. Each local variable has a different color. The member variable are in brown and, and so on. But if you don't like kdevelop, you might choose other, uh, other styles or black and white. Um, but the, the really cool feature is that you can just see, okay, what is this function doing? And you have, you have the command that uh, um, you see all the location where it's used. And if you click on it, you jump directly to the implementation in the, in the C++ file. So you, you really have the tool tips, just like in an IDE, browsing <coughs> the code, just like in an IDE. Um, so, when I started the project, there was uh, some existing projects of code browsing. Uh, one of them was Elixir, the Linux cross-reference. Uh, uh, yes, uh, and but it's not based on Clang. It's basically regex that works well for C, but not so good for C++. And there was Dxir, which is a project by Mozilla, which is a, which is also using uh, Clang to parse the code, but they were more focused on really the cross-reference rather than the browsing experience, which led me <laughs> to create my, uh, my project and my basically spare time in 2012, just for fun. I like LLVM. So uh, I decided to look at how DXR does it. It, it did it with uh, recursive AST visitor, but that's the only thing I do like then. Uh, I'm using libtooling, which is uh, um, which is the library which is used by many other tools that allows you to to build into to, to hook into the build system <laughs> to parse every C++ file or C files from the project and to do something with it. Um, so in that case, what we do with it is to to generate static HTML and fill the database. So the database. Um, 
the hype is NoSQL at the time, and I took one which is directly included in the kernel, the file system. Um, so the database is basically a, a folder full of files, a lot of files in one big folder. Um, the, ta the, the file name of the folder is the, is the symbol, which contains the location information of the definition, all the users, the documentation. And, uh, and then there is the JavaScript code, which, which is going to, to download this, this, this file when you, when you hover over a symbol to, to render the, the tooltip from the, the JavaScript file. So the, there is no code running on the server. It's just Nginx or Apache that serves static HTML. Very simple. Um, even, the, even the search is done client-side, so we, we, uh, don't, we download uh, the list of all symbols, and then the, what the browser downloads the, the, the list of all symbols in order to be able to do this, the search. Um, Yes. Um, so I'm using the C++ API rather than the C API, even though the C++ API is not uh, stable. Well, it, it doesn't maintain compat com compatibility over versions, so symbols changes. Uh, that hasn't been a, a big problem in practice. It's usually really easy to adapt to the new to the new name of the function. It's a slight annoyance. That's a bit sad that it's not that we only have this. If we want something stable, you only have the C interface, and I don't like C. Let's face it, uh, C++ is much more uh, convenient, and and it's a bit. Uh, I felt it was a bit ridiculous to go to a C layer to go back to a C++ layer. Um, it's also the, the C++ API is also way more powerful because you have access to everything, the lexer, the parser. The, you can access all the symbol. Why, if you use the C API? Uh, you can you can get along, but you you're limited in, or you, or you will have to patch the C API itself to get to what you need to do. <coughs> and it's I think I don't have benchmark of course, but I think that if you use the C API, this this uh, this external layer might be less efficient. Um, but so as I said, I use lib tooling and the compilation database. Um, so if you use CMake, you have this option export compilation database, and this exports a JSON file with all the compilation command. And that so if you use CMake, it's fine. You can really integrate with the build system. But if you don't use CMake, then it's a bit more tricky to get this compilation database up. So there's a bit of work there. Um, the lib tooling is not multi-threaded either yet. So most of the most of the time spent generating the code is actually spent generate uh, parsing the same header over and over <coughs> again because it's a bit like the compilation. Uh, if you have two compilation units, they all include all the all the headers which have to be parsed. Uh, that's a typical problem in C++. And um, so I don't regen I don't generate again. The code for the header I've already passed, but still, it then, uh, the, 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 the client needs still to pass it, to pass them. Um, so one of the optimization there, you can skip, for example, the you can skip the body of the function in the header. Um, so that's a patch that uh, there was already a way to to skip all the body of all the function, but I want to skip only the, f the body of the function of the header I've already passed. So now I added a virtual function, a hook, to be able to tell um, to tell client to skip some function, but not all of them. Um, and I also contributed some crashes fixed because um, one of the thing is that some generated file some gen generated header are not necessarily present while compiling, and there is a lot of cases of of wrong code basically because it's missing it's missing headers, and that would crash. That's a point. Clang. Uh, I guess people don't tend to report bug when when their code is at fault. So that's maybe one of the reasons why why there was still some. Um, mm -hmm. um, 
Yes, so that's that's that was my first project. Uh, is there already any question about about this this code browser? Uh, yes. Uh, it's open source. Uh, so the the sources are available. So you can go to the to the and click and find uh, the source. Yes. Um, it's not. Uh, it's a uh, Creative Commons non-commercial. Uh, I, I would like to get some profit out of it. I don't know if that's going to work. Um, so that's why I, I didn't make it uh, BSD or, or GPL yet. Um, so yes. <laughs> but I mean, I could really see, for example, KDE having an instance of this. But uh, yes, so there is an instance of. Uh, uh, so where was it? But yes, so there is the really an instance of all the code in KDE is is there. Uh, so yes, and of course KDE can have an instance of it. If they, if any project wants to have an instance of it, they can just download the uh, the source code and so and do source. so. It's well, it, <laughs> not according to the the o OZ definition of open right. source, but yes, yes, the source uh, are available. Uh, yes. Is this browsing aware of the overloaded uh, operators in um, Yes, it does. So when you when you have an operator, it, it uses the mangled name. So when you over an operator, uh, maybe I can show you the um, bug. Uh, Uh, I'm sure there will be some operators. So, for example, here we have this one. Uh, it's the one with bool, and uh, <laughs> because uh, how yes. we can uh, help you? Hmm? How we can help you? Ah, because so how you can help me? Um, <laughs> well, by providing suggestion of what you, of, and by using it, and by by providing suggestion. And as I said, I would, I, w I really would like to. To try to monetize that somehow, uh, I'm not sure that uh, that's not my ma main business, I, uh, but that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, is there any? Yes. yes. Do you think it would be easy to, uh, to make it support for the languages? Um, so, in a way, if if I had because I'm using Clang here, and which. Clang parses C, so if I were to use a library that parses Java or PHP in, in the same way, and there are such libraries, then yes, it will. The the JavaScript will probably be uh, almost the same, but of course the parser need to need to change, and the, most of the work is in the parser. So, but yes. Um, so I'll just continue to the second project, uh, which is MockNG. So. Uh, how many of you have used Qt before, or at least know it? Oh, very good. Uh, so I don't have to explain too much of what is Mock, but it's the it's it's the part it's the process that runs as part of the as part of, as, as part of the build process that passes the header and that generates the introspection data for Qt. Um, so if you have a typical Qt, pa Qt class, you have uh, those those um, Q object keyword here or pub public slots, six signal, what, what they are, it's just macros. So this is just C++ with, uh, with macros. Signals extends to public, so it's just normal public function. Um, but what mock does, it reads that code, it sees, oh, those are signals, those are, are slots. It puts the strings in some string tables that can be mapped to indexes. So scripting languages and signal slots connection can, uh, can, can introspect uh, the classes, um, yes. Uh, so the way mock does is it's a very simple C++ parser, but it only passes it. It only cares about the classes. No, it doesn't care about the function body. It doesn't care about the template. It just tries to find oh class something. Uh, open curly bracket. It passes the few functions in it. Um, so it doesn't have all the templates and uh, all the logic that that normal C++ parser should have. And it understands the Qt, the Qt keyword and generates the, the a C++ file that is compiled with, with the rest of your program. And that contains all the introspection data. 
Um, so one thing is if you've ever used it and you uh, have a syntax error in your in your code, you get a small error like this, parse error, not very useful. It would be it would be a, a bit better if we had an error much looking like like that. If you're familiar with Clang error messages, they <coughs> they look a bit better. They uh, they suggest you different thing and and highlight the right the right location in your code. And so this is a screenshot of uh, of mock ng. It's how I call it. It's a re-implementation of mock uh, using the Clang library because. Um, so how does it work? Is passes the code and, and Clang is very good at that. That's that's its uh, its purpose. So um, here, this is the, the way basically mock work. And the step three is the same in the old mock and the new new mock. The difference is that we plugged Clang to pass the code and to visit the AST. Also with the with the AST recursive AST visitor. But the thing is. The signals and uh, the, the signals and slots macros, if they if they're gone at pre-processing -pre time, then uh, what I cannot see it in the AST anymore. So I could have hooked into the preprocessor hook to see where the macro are expanded, but that's a bit that's a bit hard then to match to where the definition occurs. Um, so in order, so I changed the, the definition the definition of signals and slots <coughs> to this. Uh, attribute annotate so I can annotate the nodes in in the in the abstract syntax tree and then so I, I for each class I will visit every function and I see those that are annotated as signals or slots and that uh, and that's the way I see which are the signals and which are the slots uh, then there is the problem for the key object or the key property macro there is unfortunately nothing you can annotate mm -hmm. it, it always defines to nothing or or well, especially Q property defines to nothing mm -hmm. so um, how to annotate what can we annotate well I found out you could have a static assert node there at this location in the AST so then I defined Q property to be uh, somehow a, a static assert of size of, of a string so then when I, I browse the AST, I can recognize this pattern. I can recognize, okay, this is a static assert of a size of, of a string. And I can take the string and pass it. Um, mock can pass your header. And most of people, they do header, but they're not necessarily self-contained. Like the C++ usually always include some other header before, uh, so that that passes the compilation. But when you take only the header and you pass it, sometimes there are missing missing types and stuff like that. And that's not a problem for mock because it doesn't care. But Clang cares and will throw error at you, uh, unknown type. And uh, and if I want to be compatible with a mock, I need also to be able to ignore those errors. And uh, or at least show a, a warning. That's what I do. I show a warning, and I didn't find a, a good way to suppress the error, so I had to hook. In, I, I had to hook into the uh, diagnostic engine, and if there is an error, I, j I just say, "Oh but no, forget everything, uh, reset from scratch," as, as if you start again, just so it can uh, forget all the error. But that's not really clean. I would like if there was a way to to change it from an error to a warning. You can do the other way, but it's not helping. Um, Clang will also look into uh, into some path to find all the building includes. Uh, and you have to make usually symbolic links or install your binary in the right location if you want to do that. Uh, I wanted to have just a binary. So I cheated a bit and I made a CMake script to put all the building includes inside the binary and use those virtual file system that, uh, uh, well, those virtual file mapper that Clang has uh, to have all the building include directly in the binary. So this is the CMX script. I don't ask you to read it. Uh, I support all the all the feature of, of mocks. So then, uh, really, you can just uh, 
take this pro take this binary or take the source and compile it, and you get it just works. Uh, I've run the test, the cube test, and uh, the ones that test the warnings and the errors don't pass, but uh, all the normal tests passes. Um, or you can also use it as a plugin. So there is two ways to use it, either as a binary or as a plugin. And in that case, you don't even need to run, run it separately. You run it as part of the compilation. When client normally parses once the code, it also sees, OK, there, uh, there are some uh, obj cute objects. And then it generates the, int uh, the introspection data, uh, generates exactly the same code as before. But just after it has finished passing the compilation unit, it feeds the compiler, oh, wait, there's a bit more code there. Uh, it could have been done by generating LLVM intermediate representation, but that I didn't want to do, uh, I didn't have future improvements. Um, so in summary, uh, what we have is a better C++ parser, which means less, man less maintenance for the mock maintainer. That could be me. Uh, we, it, which does not abort uh, when you make uh, tricky C++ things. Um, you get nice you know, client looking error messages and we could be open to new possibilities like local class, classes of template what that would uh, be hard to do with the current mock. But the downside of course is that there is real-time dependency which might be a problem and uh, to be accepted as the default mock, we don't really want enqueued a dependency to, to LLVM at this point. But so that, that was really a prototype and a research project more than, <coughs> more than something that, that uh, is going to be really uh, useful. Um, so that's it. If, um, yes? What about the license of the uh, GPL, just uh, same as Qt. Yeah, well, let's thank our speaker. Yeah. And we, have a short, <coughs> we have short time for one or two questions. So. No, no question. Okay. I think it was good to let people thank you before. <laughs> Before I think nice. Oh wow, very nice presentation. Thank you. Yeah, I was browsing the I was using the code bro bro browser a while before, but it, it, yeah, it's got very nice. Yes. Uh, what about you have the suggestion? Like on Windows? Uh, I yeah, I've got uh, yeah. it on Windows. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only real problem. Oh, but uh, yes, I've, I've tried. I've tried actually to compile it on Windows, but I compiled an NPM and then I. I tried to compile my project, but I gave up because I realized there was not the uh, same thing. It was supposed to be on the same thing, and now I'm waiting on the window. When there is a tricky thing, I can make it different. So do you have your own laptop? Or? Yes. Sorry. Uh, 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 I don't know. Do you have a VTA? And, uh, I'm a liberal piece developer, which is basically a C++ uh, that doesn't work. And currently we have the open and we do the Java thing. And the question is, basically we are on a free software project and so, but there are still companies that... Yeah, yeah, if there is an adapter, but I don't know. The question is, if that's commercial or non commercial because uh, it's a uh, that's free software. So say, uh, what's your opinion? That's my opinion is that I would like I would have to have a phone adapter uh, for Mac. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 You know, um, basically we have this studio, this foundation, they have servers, so we, uh, technically we can run our own instance and then just maintain it. The question is that if that would be okay, as long as it's just studio, so there's no company right and so on. Yes, yes, that, that's I, uh, yes. Yeah, okay, so I am trying that. Yeah, I Yeah, I do. 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 Yeah
Thank you. Thank So, your name is? Uh, Laurent. Laurent Oh, wow. Laurent. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about combining Ruby with Earth. Yeah. Do, what, right. do you want me to, to tell this one? or? Resolution. Yeah, we, no. Can you change the resolution of the screen? Ah, uh, 1024. Uh, because we are like recording your screen output. If you merge the two, I think it's easier for yeah. the thing. There we go. Uh, this is good? Yep. Yeah. Still too high, yeah? <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. I think it's right. No, no, but like we are it recording. It is right, but it's so for maybe this thing we need the VGA oh, no. doesn't recognize. Uh, Did we have a Mac here before? No. Uh, oh, really? Okay. Hmm. We don't have that many options, right? So there's no. That looks alright. Oh, here. Uh, no, you can choose a uh, Earth. No, that's I think it's easy. Well, try 50 maybe. I don't know. Or it could break your computer. No, it's not that one. It's 1020. Uh, no, you can. Uh, Okay, that one works. So now the next problem we have is we don't have the full. It's cut off at the bottom and the top a little bit. Just check yeah. the slides. Like are, yeah. No, it's just no, it's just a, a strip on the top, yeah. a strip on the bottom. Oh, that's okay then. That's okay. Good. If it works with your slides, then. yeah. Ooh, wonderful. I mean, just a small, small. Chunk yeah, we can just top. like if you look. Yeah, I think you have enough. Yeah. Just all one arrow at the top. Okay. So wonderful. Oh, have a good talk. Do you want me to yeah. announce? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, folks, we're gonna have uh, Lohan. Is it Lohan? Yeah. yeah.